Well, welcome to our Global Self-Awakening Workshop. I'm Zarathustra. We're broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Um, we covered a couple different areas last week, last weekend. Um, and there's, this is the con continuation of what we've been talking about. Um, on Saturday, I explained about free will doesn't exist. On Sunday, I talked about the world is an illusion. And uh, we're going to continue talking about that. So some of you do send me messages asking me questions uh, on the subjects that I've already covered them. Um, you're welcome to talk to me directly if you want. But some of the stuff are going to be redundant. So I would like you to watch the previous two videos. And if you still have a question, then I'll be happy to help you. So let's take a couple moments and sink inside and get quiet. Again, uh, we've spoken about this many times at the, my weekly academy uh, on Wednesdays that I broadcast that meditation should be super simple and it shouldn't be something that you're putting an effort to make it happen. It's an, an event that happens naturally uh, in our lives. Meditation is not something that you do. It's not an action. Meditation is something that by naturally being yourself, it happens. It's an occurrence that happens naturally. I would like you to really pay attention to what I'm saying because it's really important. People think that meditation is something that they do, okay? So you're gonna go to the gym and you're gonna exercise. So you're doing something. You're gonna go for a run. You're gonna go do yoga. You go lift weights. You're stretching your body. That's something you do, it's an action. Meditation is not an action. It's not something that you go do it. Meditation is something that happens naturally. It's a natural occurrence that happens on a daily basis to pretty much every human being around the world. Now, there are times that you're in meditation and you're not aware of it. And I'm going to give you a couple examples. And there are times that in you're in complete oneness with existence, but you're not aware of it that you're completely in oneness. And I'm going to explain that part of it to you too. So it clicks. And as your awareness goes in that direction, you will see how simply these events happening. So for the moment, let's just simply be quiet and d divert your attention inwards. So instead of having your attention on the other world, you're switching your attention towards inner world and you look inside and seek. You're searching, you're looking for the aware one, the observer within yourself, the witness, the one that is aware and witnessing whatever event is happening, whether it's happening in your head you're hearing some words or it happens in a form of a feeling, you're feeling something. So that means you as the awareness is aware of feelings, is aware of thoughts. Simultaneously, 
you're aware of your body sensations. So go ahead and bring your attention inwards towards the source of yourself without trying, without putting an effort into it. Simply divert your attention inwards. Take a deep breath and relax. And if your mind is busy and you're hearing noises, simply allow it to be, don't fight your mind. Don't try to quiet your mind. Just keep your attention on the observer. Just hang out in this moment with yourself. If 
without an agenda. You're not trying to get to anywhere. Put that idea away. Whatever ideas you have, put them away to reach a higher level of consciousness, to go beyond the mind, to be quiet, to be one with everything. Put all ideas away. Just hang out in this moment. Get to know this moment. Spend time by yourself quietly in this moment. But without any agendas, without any ideas that you are trying to accomplish anything. You're simply undoing thousands of years of conditioning by simply being here. Exercising your very right of simply hanging out in this moment. You're simply spending time by yourself, spending time with the Holy Self, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, and you. Spending time with the Supreme Being, your Holy Self.
and in this union and then spending time opening space, you begin to discover a precious gem, the presence, the power of the love of the self, which is here. The recognition of the divine self in your heart. Getting to know the force field, the power of love that resides in your heart. This is the divine love. And only when you slow down and you stop and you give up all agendas and you're not involved, you disconnect from the other world and you spend time with the presence yourself, you discover that there is a giant living inside your heart. You discover the power of the divine love. God itself is living in your heart. In that recognition, fears begin to disappear. You're giving yourself a chance to discover that which you've been looking for. It's already inside yourself. You are who you're looking for. It's already here. And all you had to do, and all you have to do is simply stop, slow down. Slowing down. And this is a perfect opportunity right now that existence has decided that the entire planet needs to slow down and come to a halt, stop. It's a perfect setup. 
perfectly designed for us to go inwards. To seek and to look for the truth of who we are. And having an opportunity to discover who we thought we were is not really who we really are. We are something much, far, much greater than that. So this is a great chance, great opportunity for us to recognize that. Perfect timing. What an incredible opportunity that we have. A golden opportunity. The gateway to heaven has opened up and this is the chance we have. We can jump in right now. Through the great gateway. It's already open. It is an opportunity to let go of everything that's holding you back. Collectively, we have a chance to go to the next level. We have this opportunity right now. It's more than ever in our lives. Any more than ever in any period of time on human history, this is the moment. It's right now. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to play games with yourself and play it safe? Or you're willing to jump? You're willing to risk? So slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Shift your attention from inner world to the other. So I'm going to talk about the benefits of not having free will. There are many, many benefits that when you realize you don't have any free will, in the beginning it's weird, but then as you start to recognize that, you realize that you're on cruise control and actually everything is provided and you don't need to worry about it. But before I get into this, let me explain one very special thing so you understand something. For those of you who are still struggling with the idea with the reality of not really having a free will because there is no individual entity separated from the source. There is nobody separated from life. So your will that seems to be free will is the will of existence. Existence is willing through you, is deciding, acting, speaking, making mistakes or 
appears to be making mistakes or gaining things. There's failure and there's victory. They're all happening through you. While you still have this sense that you're the one who's doing it, but you're not. Now, let's take a look at this. Let me explain one thing to you. For example, a car, an ordinary car, an average size car, let's say, is made out of 10,000 pieces. There's 10,000 different components that put together and make a car. Every time you sit in your car and you want to turn the switch on and drive, all of these 10,000 components in the car, they all have to have your thumbs up and say, yes, today I'm going to be working. So, for instance, you're going to turn this ignition switch on and the battery needs to work. So it needs to supply uh, electricity. The starter needs to work. The alternator needs to work. All the wires need to work. The engine needs to work. The fuel pump needs to work. Everything needs to work for the car to start. Then you start driving the car. You're driving your car and all these 10,000 components in a car, they all have to be in an agreement with each other that we're all going to be working. The brakes working, the cables working, the wires working. So you're driving your car. So as you're driving your car, you're passing other cars. And the other cars that you're passing, they have to be working as well. And so all these other vehicles, all the parts in them must say, yes, I'm going to be working fine today. So this is not in your control. For those of you who think you manifest your own reality and you make your own reality, you, how are you going to be affecting 10,000 pieces of, in one car and other cars that they work in that day in that moment when you're driving, they're all in agreement that they work in your favor so you don't crash into other cars. So let's say all these 10,000 pieces in the car are working and then we come to the driver. So you're the driver, you're driving the vehicle. And that moment when you're driving the vehicle, Everything in your body needs to work fine too, perfectly. Your eyes are working, all your judgment, all the messages that are coming that you're driving, your tail, tail ending one car. The car in front of you is going to slow down and you need to slow down. So your body, your mind, your eyes, your neurotransmitters, Everything is in agreement. Your digestion, your heart, everything is working perfectly. So you're capable of driving the car in that moment. So all the communication is happening in your body perfectly. Otherwise, if you misjudge, there's a moment of misjudging that something's not really quite right you can crash into another car and the results could be fatal. So your body is in complete agreement of, of cooperating 100%. Now, same, same, similarly, every other driver who's passing by you, their bodies have to work in perf perfectly so they don't make a mistake. Their attention doesn't go somewhere else. Something physically doesn't happen to them and they don't crash into you. Are you in control of other human beings? Can you control them that everyone who's driving their car, are you manifesting that, that this is under your free will, that everybody else that you're passing passing by that moment 
not not even a day in that moment can you influence other drivers that they do exactly what they need to do in order for you not to crash in them and not have an accident are you in charge of them too so think about that the next thing is that all the stoplights that you're passing by the stoplights must be working correctly so your st- your light needs to be green and when you're passing through an intersection somebody else's light has to be red so you're not going to run into and crash into each other are you in control of the stoplights are you controlling them are they a part of your free will that the stoplights the street stoplights they're working perfectly when you're driving is that a part of your free will then so let's say assuming that all the stoplights are working correctly and there's no malfunctioning in their system so there's no crashes what about the weather does the weather need to be in compliance what about you're driving from your home and you're planning to go to the airport the airport is about 45 minutes away and you're driving to the airport and all of a sudden there's a very strong blizzard a storm comes and a tree falls down and blocks the road are you in charge of that too does your free will influences the weather the weather is can you manipulate the weather because you have free will you're the author of your own story can you influence the weather to manipulate it that you are driving from your home and going to the airport that the weather cooperates with you and be perfect and those of you who live in scandinavia you live in east coast or in northern hemisphere in in canada or east coast of united states or in europe you know about bad weather you know about storms blizzards all kinds of different things that happen um are you in co- control of that so in that day when you're driving from home to get to the airport the weather has to say yes so there's no hurricanes there's no earthquakes there's no blizzards there's no storms there's no um excessive wind whatever it is everything is working so when you're paying attention when you're looking at this when you just want to do a simple thing and that simple thing is that you get in your car and drive to the airport you get in your car and you want to go grocery shopping whatever whatever that you're going to do there is millions of different elements that they all have to be cooperating and hand in hand agreeing with each other that you do a simple thing that simple thing that we don't think about it is to get in my car and i drive to the airport am i in control of all these different millions and millions of different elements is this all a part of my free will and that's not it i can control the weather i can control the traffic lights i can control other drivers that their judgments is correct they pay attention they're not on their phone texting they're not distracted by their kids in the back seat the two kids are fighting with each other and mommy's driving and her attention goes to quiet the kids and all of a sudden she goes off track and she has a head to head collision with you and she kills you or you both get killed so who's in charge of that who's running this show is this your free will are you the one who's manifesting this when you begin to look at this from a higher perspective and a different level of consciousness you begin to see 
that you can't possibly be in charge of so many different elements and components of life to manipulate them to do exactly what you want them to do and things go your way. So I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to examine it in your life to see if you're manifesting it or it's a part of a greater force. Now, as you go deeper in your work and you shift your consciousness and you begin to open up to this idea, you begin to open your eyes and this realization that you're really not in control of anything because you don't, you're not an individual separated from life. You are a part of life and it is life that chooses. It's life that has written your destiny. It's life that operates through you. It's making decisions through you and all these things. And we talked about it. The reason for that is because the source wants to experience all these different aspects of life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the failure and the success. The source wants to experience them. And life really doesn't have a preference. Life doesn't prefer something beautiful versus something ugly. It doesn't care. Life equally creates beauty and ugliness. That's a part of the duality of third dimension. Life equally creates good people and bad people, angelic people and evil people. Life creates both of them and supports their existence. They're all parts of life. They're all manifestations of life. If life cared and wanted to prefer one thing over the other thing, then it would have been all angelic realms. It would all be forces of light and love and angels and everyone's wearing white and everybody's very peaceful and everyone's very loving and nothing bad ever happens in life. Everything is just positive and lovey-dovey. But that's not how it is, is it? There's a lot of ugliness in the world. There's a lot of cruelty in the world. There's a lot of darkness in the world too. Now why would life create that as well? Obviously, life doesn't have preferences. It doesn't prefer one over the other. It's producing and creating both of them simultaneously. It is us who have a judgment over it. It's us who prefer light over darkness. And if you were brought up in a condition that you enjoy darkness, then you don't like light. And we can see that there are the groups of human beings on this planet that they are attracted to the darkness. They're not into the light. And that equally exists. I want you to pay attention to that. Soak it in. Let's sit on it for a moment. We have darkness, we got negative stuff, we got disasters, we got wars, famine, disease, as well as all the good stuff in this world. Why? Why do we have both of them? Why don't we just have the good stuff? It's because life produces both equally 
and life is experience all of them simultaneously. They're all a part of the oneness. So are we. We are a part of the oneness, all of us. And in this understanding that we're a part of the oneness means you're not an individual separated from the oneness. You're not somewhere else. You are a part of it. In that understanding, in this shift of consciousness, of understanding, in this opening that your mind starts to open and you start to see the bigger picture or a glimpse of it, a number of things start to happen. One thing starts to happen is that in the beginning, the mind will come and say, oh my God, well, how am I going to pay my bills and how am I going to take care of my children and look after myself if I'm not in control? If I don't have free will, if I'm not the one who's choosing things, so who's going to take care of it? How is it happening? But then as you start to relax into this understanding and you're kind of letting go by switching your attention inwards, you start hanging out with this guy inside you. You're hanging out, you're bringing your attention to the source, to the power. As you're doing this, your mind starts to quiet down. The mind quiets down, so there's no questions. You're not questioning things. You're not questioning of how am I going to be taken care of? Who's going to feed me? You're kind of relaxing into this understanding. And then in this relaxation, in that moment that this, the switch is flipped and you're just kind of relaxing into it, all of a sudden you start to begin to see simultaneously that there's a greater force that is feeding you. It's providing to you. Even though it looks like you're the one who's doing things, you're the one who has to go to work, you're the one who has to take care of your children, you're the one who's paying your checks, your bills, but you start to see that there's a natural flow which is happening through you and the more you recognize that the more you start to see that existence is really providing for you all the time in a very mysterious way in a very very mysterious way life takes care of you and the more you surrender into it the easier it gets not easier as far as, okay, I'm really going to surrender to life and incorporate this understanding. That means I don't have to go to work anymore. I don't have to make money anymore. Or I don't have to look after my children anymore. I'm not talking about that. You still have to go to work. You still have to make money. And you still have to be responsible. And if it's in your karma that you need to work a lot to pay your bills, if it's in your karma that you have to be very responsible for a lot of kids or family or whatever, if that's a part of your karma, you will be doing that. When I say things get easier, I'm not saying that existence is going to deposit $5,000 a month in your bank account automatically every month it can happen but that's not what I'm talking about easy as far as that goes what I'm talking about it becomes easy as far as you start to realize the flow it's a recognition of the flow of life that you're not the one who's calling the shots you're not the one who making these decisions. 
even though it looks like you are, but you start to realize you are not. Even though in a moment it appears that you're the one who decides that, okay, let's go on a family vacation. Or let me buy this piece of real estate. It appears to be you're making that decision, but that decision is already being made for you. And you start to see that. You start to notice it. That something much bigger than you is making the decisions for you and putting it in your heart and makes you think you're doing it, but you're not doing it. It appears that you're making the decision, but that is doing it for you. You start to see it. You start to notice that. And that's where the freedom starts to come. Because you begin to realize that you're in good hands, no matter which direction you go. Whether your decision ends into a disaster, it's a mistake, everything went wrong, or your decision turns to be very positive, you don't question it anymore. You don't beat yourself up. You are starting to surrender to whatever f happens in your life. Whatever is happening, you're surrendering to it and you're accepting it. And you don't blame yourself. The blame goes away. You decide on doing something and that thing ends up losing money. You lose money in an area. But you know, you didn't make that decision. It was a part of your path to do that. And you lose money, you recognize it, but you're not afraid because you know that the source, God, wanted you to do that experience. But you're so much in surrender that existence brings another situation for you. It puts you in that situation that you're in trouble and the same force takes you out of that situation and puts you in another situation. You begin to see the flow. And in that you're surrendering to it and you're gonna see how easily things come together. And in that, switch of consciousness this is a switch in your perception it's a perception you have you were looking at things this way that you're in control you're the one who's making the decisions and when the decisions go wrong you're beating yourself up on the other hand when the decisions go right you're patting yourself telling yourself how great you are you no longer do any of them. You're simply a vehicle for Her Majesty to operate through you. You have become a vehicle without any illusions that you have anything to do with any of it. You are simply a tool. You become a pen Your pen in the hand of God. The pen doesn't decide what to write. It's the hand that is writing. You're just a pen. You become a pen in the hand of God. God is writing all this nice poetry. You have nothing to do with it. You're just a pen. But then you publish a book and you put your name on it. And you sell a million copies of that book. And a lot of people come and applaud to you. But you know down inside that you didn't write that book. You were a vehicle. You were a pen. God was using you to write the book. You can't 
you may say thank you, thank you very much, da 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 da, but down deep inside, you know you didn't do it. And down deep inside, you know you're taken care of at all times, no matter where you are, what happens, you know that you're 100% taken care of regardless of anything happens in the world. Anything happens in the world, it doesn't matter what that is, you are 100% protected always, always. because you've given up the illusion of free will. Amir, do I have my book here? Oh yeah, if you give me the book, thank you. I wanna read something to you. That's tremendous amount of freedom. That is freedom, freedom from suffering. This whole part that if you get it and implement it in your daily life will free you. But of course, a part of this freedom is that going around the sick mind, going around this mind, which is diseased, it's sick, it's twisted, it's tormented. For some of you, the mind is tormented completely. It creates all kinds of suffering. It makes you suffer because you believe it because you believe you're your mind, you're your thought, stream of thoughts. That's what you believe you are. You're not your thinking mind because you're capable of observing your mind from somewhere else. If you were your thinking mind, you would never know it. You wouldn't be able to observe it. These days they have a fancy word for it. They call it mindfulness. And there is schools teaching mindfulness. Means you're observing your mind. Papaji Punjaji, my sat guru, used to say all the time, the apparent life takes care of itself. The apparent life takes care of itself. The life that appears to be real, the lila, the world, takes care of itself means that this one that appears to be in this world, in this life, this unit, this man, who appears to be a single human being, capable of doing its own thing, which is a part of the life, the same life that has created this is the same life that's responsible to feed it, to close it, to house it. The more you recognize that you are a part of the oneness, you are the oneness, the less you're responsible to take care of yourself. 
because you realize you're not your own responsibility. Life is taking care of you, which is huge. That's a big step. That's a big jump because it's very frightening. It's very, very frightening from a lot of people to let go and shift their consciousness because that's entering into fifth dimensional consciousness. Going from a 3D, third dimensional consciousness, which is separation. It's a me, 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 versus you, into the recognition that all of it is me. I am all of it. I'm a part of all. Therefore, it is the big kahuna that is taking care of me because there is no separate me. Me in separation doesn't exist. So in this recognition is the merge, emergence of the third dimensional way of thinking into ascending, it's an ascension to fifth dimension. It means entering in your psyche, in your mind, into your being, entering into this level of consciousness, the fifth dimensional consciousness, which is a dimension of oneness. There's only one. So when we talk about ascension to fifth dimension, when we talk about evolving into this higher level of consciousness, we're not talking about you're going to be transported from this planet into another star system. We're not talking about a shift, a geographical shift, that we're gonna evolve into this level, in this other level of consciousness, that doesn't mean you're going to jump ship. You're not gonna leave this planet to go into another planet somewhere else. It's not a geographical shift. It's a shift in your consciousness within yourself. It's going from a level of fear, anxiety, worry, and a sense of separation with everything into the recognition that you are one with everything so when the shift is happening, within you, your perception changes. You start to see things differently. You see this and that one. The shift happens in you. The planet Earth is the same planet Earth that it was there before. Your perception has changed. Your relationship is changing to the planet Earth and everybody else and everything else. For example, if a blind man suddenly starts to see, okay? So you've been blind for 40 years and after 40 years, all of a sudden you can see. Everything has changed, but nothing has changed. Because everything has changed for you, the blind person, everything is different now. All of a sudden you can see things which for, for 40 years you couldn't see. So everything has changed for you, but the life doesn't give a hoot. 
it doesn't give it doesn't care that you can see the sun still arising the sun still setting the seasons still come and go your neighbors still doing their work their work they go to work the postman delivers mail if there is traffic on the street still there is traffic on the street if there is fire trucks with sirens driving they're driving no one's going to stop because you can see nobody cares but everything has changed in your world but nothing has changed in the other world so it's the same thing in the awakening when you awaken when you're are on route to expanding you're expanding your horizon your consciousness is shifting your awareness is changing you're waking up you're recognizing what what are you waking up to what is it you wake up to what's self awakening what's enlightenment what's self realization what is it you're realizing what are you waking up to what changes people think that if i go through a process of self realization and awakening my neck ache you know my ulcer is going to go away my arthritis is going to disappear i'm no longer going to miss my children I would never feel jealous I would never feel sad I would never have to pay anything bills everything's going to be provided Your body is still going to be the same body Emotions still come and go You still have to pay your mortgage or your rent So in the outer world nothing changes maybe some changes happen it's your relationship and perception to the outer world that shifted that you've become free from that you're not going to be transported to another star system you're still here on this planet but all of a sudden this planet appears differently to you it looks differently it's no longer hostile all of a sudden it becomes a natural flow for you what was suffering before it becomes joy it becomes very easy to deal with it because you're no longer perceiving things from this point of view of separation you see it all as your own self everything is your own self and slowly you begin to see your shadows your dark sides you're willing to recognize that because and admitting it they're not going to be pushed underneath especially with spiritual conditioning that we're experiencing today you're starting to expand and seeing your dark side and your light side and everything else surrender starts to take over you're surrendering to life surrendering to what is rather than how it should be 
because right now you think life should be in a certain way. It's not good the way it is because it's not in your way you think it should be. You begin to surrender to it. And as you surrender into it, gratitude comes. You become very grateful of everything you have. It's not going to be boring. Not having free will, it's not going to be boring. It's freedom. A lot of pressure is off of you. Because you no longer have to prove this thing all the time that you can do it. You become the flow. And if it wants to do it through you, it will do it through you. Very easily. Like this. In a second. Because it's infinite. An infinite has the ability to do whatever it wants at any moment and be anything it wants. So if it wants to transform you in a second into a scientist or to a genius or to an whatever it wants or hook you up with your lover or twin flame or the man of your life or the woman of your life, it can do it at any moment it wants, at any moment beyond your imagination. If it wants to make you very rich, you become very rich. If it wants to make you poor, it will make you poor. If it wants to make you healthy and vibrant, immediately that will happen. It will do whatever it wants to do to you. But you're surrendered to it. You're not resisting it anymore. You're free. And in that freedom, there's gratitude of every single moment of life. I was riding my bicycle on Sunday on the boardwalk, Santa Monica, Venice, Santa Monica. It was very busy. A lot of people were out there. And I'm riding my bicycle and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I am so lucky. I mean, I literally had tears coming down my eyes, riding a bicycle on a boardwalk. Simple thing, nothing fancy. I wasn't in a jet flying over Los Angeles. I wasn't in a balloon. I wasn't in a power boat. I wasn't dri driving a Ferrari going 150 miles. I was riding a bicycle, an older bicycle. And I was like, oh my God, how lucky I am. My knees are working, my body's working. I can ride a bicycle. My body is allowing me to ride a bicycle. Wow, I can still do it. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it tomorrow. But right now I can. Then the sun was shining. It was like, wow, I have sunshine in this day. Very simple thing. And I was in complete gratitude of it. And how lucky I am I can do this when maybe millions of people around the world can't do what I'm doing. A simple thing. Simplicity. Simply riding a bicycle, breathing the air, smelling the aroma, 
having the wind coming to your face, the sun, and just being alive in this moment, being able to use your senses, being able to feel presence in this moment, the union with God, feeling God inside you, feeling this love which is here. You don't have to do anything for it. It's already here. All you do is recognize it. And you're not listening to this one because this one was saying, oh, Zarathustra, what are you doing here? You should be in Ibiza right now. You should be on a big boat where the party is. You should be da-da-da-da. You should be doing something else. You should have more. This is not enough. That's what your mind is going to tell you. You should be with blah, blah, blah. Love of your life right now, hand in hand, walking. Your mind will go to these places because this is not good enough in this moment. It should be something else. It will play those tricks. But when you have gone beyond your mind into the presence in this moment, it's again a perception. It's a shift in the way you look at things. Then all of a sudden, every moment of life, it becomes precious and becomes unique. including your darkness, including your light. And whatever you experience, whether you experience your dark or you experience your light, in that moment you experience it, but there is no story attached to it. You don't sit down and attach a story oh i had a bad thought came to my mind i judged that person you don't attach a story to it if you have a bad thought a, a negative thought comes into your mind you hear it and it's gone you move on you're not attached to any of it you're simply here here could be everything could be nothing But it's so simple. And you get to this point that your mind begins to cooperate with you. That it refuses to go outside of here. It refuses to go into any future time. It refuses to go into any past. It gives you the ability to use past memories as information but you're not dwelling anywhere else you can't go in the future you can't go in the past you're here and here in this moment is perfect until it's not but here is always perfect regardless is what's happening the rest is happening in your mind The truth of who you are or what we are is that as long as you're alive and your heart is beating means God is existing in here, the soul, the spirit is in you, the living spirit. I don't care who you are, what you do, what is your agenda. The living spirit is living in you means you're worthy enough for God to be operating through you because you're alive. So you can drop your stories of self-hate, self 
lack of self-acceptance and just dive into here. Dive into the heart. Dive into the love that you experience. I'm not talking about superficial love. I'm not talking about romantic love. I'm not talking about couples love. I'm not talking about that. That comes and goes. That's conditional. I'm talking about the one which is here. It's unconditional. Discovering the truth of who you are, that the presence is here, the love is here, and you're experiencing it in every second of your life. That's the ultimate goal. That's the gift. Everything else is nonsense. Why would I want to waste my life trying to accomplish anything except self-realization? Nothing else should be important for, to you. Self-awakening, self-realization, the ultimate truth of who you are recognizing that you are the one you've been looking for should be your number one priority in this life. Not how much money I'm going to make, how many homes I'm going to have, how many people I'm going to sleep with, how many cars I'm going to have, how much money I will save before I die so I have a lot of money saved up. None of these things should matter to you. All of it should be number two, number three, number four, number five. Your only priority in this life, especially right now, since it's in your face, should be self-realization, ultimate freedom, complete awakening, complete emergence with the God, ascending to fifth dimensional consciousness, the recognition of your own self, your divinity. That should be our number one priority in this life. Otherwise, you wasted this life. You have wasted your life because there's nothing else that matters. That should be your priority. Everything else is going to serve your goal. Everything else should be designed to serve and to create a platform for you to work on yourself to reach your, your goal, which is self-realization. Money, love, kids, family, home, everything else should be designed for you to support you to do this work. Otherwise, you wasted your life. I don't care what you accomplished. You wasted your time. And you're going to have to come back again because you didn't make it. Because this one thing, once you go towards it and you dive into it, will take care of everything else. That's its beauty. Okay.
The ultimate understanding comes through silence. Silence is gold. Everything that we're talking about, everything that I say is a point of reference. It's only referencing. It's just saying, go that direction. So you come to me and you ask me, Zarathustra, which way is to the post office? Where is the post office? And I say, go that direction. Go that way. So everything I'm saying is only a point of reference. But ultimately, I prefer don't even say a word because what I'm pointing out is go towards silence. Of course, your mind needs some sort of direction because you're confused because you've been brainwashed and you've been conditioned to believe that you are someone doing something. And as a result of that, you keep suffering because you keep failing and you don't get what you want. And when you get it, you lose it. Finally, when you got everything, you have it for a period of time that everything is great and then it falls apart. And then you suffer again. So I'm sharing these things with you. But ultimately, I would prefer to just be silent because everything is directing you to silence. This teaching that I share with you is to help you answer some of your questions that the mind has, but the actual teaching is a transmission that happens through silence. The transmission that happens in being quiet, because only when you're quiet and you're silent means the mind slows down, the heart opens, and the true wisdom comes from the heart, the love. When the mind has no questions, the mind is silence. There's no question of God. There's no question of oneness. There's no question of ascending to fifth dimension. None of these things exist anymore because there is no thoughts. You're silent, you're here. And you know, because you recognize the love. Anybody has any questions? Can they write on the chat box? Okay, we're gonna open the chat box. Sorry, we had it shut down. Either, yeah. We had to take the option of unmuting yourself because of this is open. They can unmute themselves or the chat box. Yeah, you can write a message or those of you who I can see you, you can wave at me and I'll unmute you and we can talk.
and I can't answer on Facebook and on Instagram. I appreciate you write to me, but I can't answer you. If you want to communicate with me, come on our website, zaratustra.tv. Go to the calendar, free online global self-awakening workshop. Click on that. Scroll down and register there and come on Zoom so I can communicate with you. Okay. Susanna. Okay. Hi, Hi Susanna. Hello, Zara. Hi. 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 First of all, <laughs> I, I, it took me a while to recognize, to remember, <laughs> but... <laughs> not, not remember it. who you are it's so <laughs> nice to connect with you likewise i think the last time was like four years ago or something yeah I, yeah 2016 i believe it was wow that was the last time i was okay yeah yeah but yeah, we met right. many times here in denmark it was so good um i would like to say thank you for today it resonates with me so much it's so amazing everything makes sense what you say to me and then i realized uh the past everything was navigating me to this point mm -hmm. right. so for me really makes sense and it's big relieving with uh with the responsibility thing okay that you can just give it away and for right. me it's just like thanks god for me, it's really like, finally. <laughs> so I really want to say thank you because it's really going like a puzzle uh, game together for me, for me. Right, I get it. Uh, so thank you, big thing. Uh, but I wanna, I have a question. We have the responsibility to take, to take care about the body, right? About the avatar we're using. So what we're going to do when it's coming in place, the new technology uh -huh. and it's going to change actually the nature for us as our avatar operates. The body is just like resonating on some vibrations. But with the new global technology, the vibration will be different. Right. So what we can do okay. or what is it like there? Yeah, you do the next thing, whatever the next thing is. When the time comes, that which is running the show, yeah. Her Majesty the Supreme, will present you with the next step. So we don't need to worry about it. Cool. That same force that has brought you all the way to this point is responsible to take you all the way to the end. Yeah. So yep. you just, again, the mind wants to go into the future because, you know, we watch videos and, you know, in these videos, 10 years from now and 15 years from now, and, you know, it's the, uh, basically the end of human beings as physical and it's going to be uploaded in a computer system, right? That's what you're relating to, right? AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, well, that's that's really. But right. I mean, just uh, just the thing uh, with the new internet, which is gonna work in completely different way than it's working now. So the right. radi yeah. So the right. radiation waves is gonna disrupt right. our. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Everything's gonna change, and everything is changing. Yeah. But the source, the supreme being who is operating through all of us, if it wants life on this planet to continue, because it's itself, it will make adjustments to it somehow miraculously. It will create a situation that it works because it's its own expression. It's God expressing itself through all of us. So if it wants this to continue, it will create a new thing that you and I can't think about it because it's the infinite. Yeah. 
So all of a sudden, human body starts to produce a, a hormone or a protein that is resisting to radiation. All of a sudden, something appears. You yeah. know? Yeah. It, it will adjust itself to whatever is happening. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Right. So we just come back again to here. We practice what we have to practice is to simply be here and not go outside of here. Yeah. Now, yes, it's beneficial. And, uh, you know, obviously you think about future. Your mind goes to the future. You're looking at possibilities, you know. You're not a vehicle which is dumb, you know. It's not like a stupor. Like, you're a robot, I only do what I have to do in this moment. I don't do anything. Obviously, you are exploring, you're looking at possibilities, you're open to things, you know, you have an operating working mind, and you're looking at things. But you always, yeah, you go in the future, you know, I watch futuristic movies, uh, possibilities of or videos on YouTube and da, da 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 da. I watch all these things. I take everything with a grain of salt, and I always come back to here. I can see sometimes the mind wants to go in the future and freak out. Oh my God, what's going to happen? And blah 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 blah. And then you woo, you come back here, and all of a sudden everything's quiet. There's nothing going on. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. the thing. So yeah, you need that the practice to be here. Yeah, yeah. I experiencing the sudden happiness without no reason. Like, of course, there is a reason. It's the being, right? And I'm just like, what the heck is happening to me? Why I'm happy? Okay, yeah. cool. Let's keep it. <laughs> so exactly. And it's lately. So the shift is really happening. Like, yeah, the shift yeah. is really happening. It's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Cool. Thank okay. you very much, Sara. You're welcome. Nice seeing you again. <laughs> Likewise. So we have another question. Okay, let me just see. All right, Tanaz, where are you? Let me find you. Hi, Tanaz. I'm unmuting you. Hi. Nice to see you. Are you there? I'm here. Okay, you need to talk a little louder. I can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, great. Okay, that question just came to me while I was hiking. <laughs> okay, okay, you want to tell me your question so everyone can hear it? Yeah, um, so just my, let me read it from the chat. Hold on, okay. If the, if the I, the ego, is the false self, which is illusion, and it is nothingness, and the infinite God self is everything and all that is, then how can we be nothing and everything at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> because, because we are the infinite. And infinite is everything and nothing in the same time. You're not separated from the infinite. I will, I will tell you. It's actually very, very simple. It's a wonderful question. It's sophisticated. It's deep. But its answer is is also, uh, if you get it, you will see it's super simple in some ways. When we sleep and we don't dream, or when we go into absolute silence and there is no thoughts, a shift happens. When you sleep and you don't dream, so you sleep and you put your head down and you're not dreaming, you fall asleep, and in that period of time that you're sleeping, let's say from here to here, 
you sleep for four hours, for eight hours, whatever, that you slept, and there is no dreaming, zero, no recollection of it. What happens to you in that period of time? You're sleeping, you're not dreaming, and you went into coma. And where did you, what happened to you in that time? And where did the world go? Where is the world when you're sleeping and you're not dreaming? What happened to the world? Are you talking about out of body experience? No, no, no. I'm talking about you just go to bed. Mm -hmm. You went to bed last night and you slept, correct? Mm -hmm. And then if you sleep and you're not dreaming, there's no thoughts, there's no dreams. We all have this deep sleep every once in a while. Some people have it regularly, some people don't. But you, let's say even for half an hour, for one hour you sleep and you have no dreams. And then when you wake up, normally you say what? You say, oh my God, I was gone. I had such a great deep sleep. I was gone. Because you sleep, you put your head down and you're, you, you don't, you're not aware of your body anymore. You're not aware of your sweetheart. Let's say you're having your sweetheart in your arms. That one disappears. Your home disappears. Your worries disappear. If you have financial issues, they disappear. If you have emotional issues, they disappear. Everything disappears because you're not there. And then when you wake up with your awakening, everything comes back. When you wake up, everything comes back. So you went to nothing Everything disappeared and you wake up and everything comes back. So from nothing to everything and everything to nothing. And that's how it is. You see that? From nothing to everything and from everything to nothing. And that's how it is. God, existence, the source, in its pure form, let's say consciousness at rest. The, the big kahuna, the grand spirit, the creator of the world, in its pure form it's flat there is nothing it's not even aware of itself that's why it's nothing then it makes a movement and all of a sudden this flat lake flat ocean has a wave oh, it and creates, creates it creates the manifestation all of a sudden everything appears there's an appearance of the world duality the mountains the people the roads the jungles but then it happens in this movement everything appears it manifests but then when it goes to rest everything falls back and goes to nothing there's nothing again. You can examine it with your sleeping. You can examine it with your silence. Go into silence. You're sitting, you close your eyes, and there's no thoughts, absolutely nothing. And what happens is if you do it correctly, you have no awareness of your body. Everything disappears. Interesting.
Yeah, it's constantly, continuously going back and forth. It's shifting from everything and going to nothing. It's like you have a backpack, okay? You got this backpack and you open your backpack, but it's got reversed engineering. So you're pulling these things out of the backpack, things coming out. And the more you take things out, the more things come out. So now you got a lot of fabric, you got shoes, you got clothes, you got your computer, everything comes out of the backpack. So now you have a lot of stuff. And then you put everything back into and everything just folds back into the backpack again. And the backpack disappears. When you wake up in the morning, the first thought comes in your mind is the I, I thought, me. With this thought of me, I, I am, I am Zarathustra, I am a man, I live in the US. With that one comes the world. The world starts to become into construction. All these components come back, the world comes back to existence. But then when I sleep at night and I'm not dreaming and there's no mind activities, that world disappears and it doesn't exist. Same as its problems. Everything disappears. And then with you, the I thought, everything comes back. That's why if you want to re realize it and recognize the truth of who you are, you have to become quiet. Means go beyond the mind when there is no mind activity, there's no thoughts. That's how you realize the self. Because there is no I, there's no me in there either. It's only silent. And in silence, transmission takes place. The power of silence is beyond any power, similar to the power of love. In silence, you tap into the heart and the power takes over. You're not using that power in order to manipulate the utter world. Forget about that. You're not tapping into this power to changing the world to your image. Then you're, you're wrong. You're just going the wrong direction. You become quiet and you tap into the inner power, which is pure being, pure love. And in that, you have transcended time space. You have gone beyond time space. You entered into the fifth dimensional consciousness, which there is no time and there is no space. It's only the being. And that's where you start to get the juice. It's the recognition of that which is 
always here. The recognition of that which is always present and does not change. That is here in your own heart. You as a human being have that, this opportunity in this life to self-realize with correct guidance. But you have to do it. There is work. And a part of that is you need to learn to be quiet. Silence is the key to this. Means you have to give up everything else you know. All of the spiritual teachings that you've learned, you have to throw them down the garbage. None of them comes handy. You don't need it. Anything that is giving you an idea of what you should do, what you shouldn't do, is a hindrance. It's actually blocking you from getting to where you want to get to because it's a concept. You got to let it go and not know anything and be naked and be empty and just be quiet. Forget about your spiritual teachings and trainings. That's a hindrance. It was good to bring you to this point, but from here on, you got to let it go. It's like you wanted to cross the river and you needed a boat. So you got in a boat and you start rowing and you got to the other part of the river. Now you're on the other side of the river. Now you don't put the boat on your head and carrying the boat anymore when you're walking on the land. You're walking in a jungle and you're carrying the boat. You don't need the boat anymore. The boat was good enough to get you from this shore to this shore. All the spiritual teachings, they were good to get you to this point. From here on, you got to throw them away. You don't know anything. You give it all up and you just be quiet. You just be quiet. You just be quiet. You just be quiet. And transmission takes place. The transmission between the guru, your guru, which is inside yourself, your sat guru, it's inside yourself. But you don't understand the language of communication with your guru. That's why an utter guru appears on your life to communicate with you. But the language to communicate with your inner guru is not a language of speaking or thinking. It's a language of silence. You have to be quiet. Be silent. Don't think. Keep quiet. And in, that is the language you speak to your inner guru. Then your inner guru begin to give you the transmission. Transmission starts to happen. Means the wisdom of the inner guru will surface to you. But you got to dump all your spiritual trainings. Throw them all in the garbage bag. And then wisdom will take over. That's how it is. Nah, nah. Hi, Monica, I'm unmuting you. You have to accept it. Okay. Uh, I'm, you hear me now? Yes, I do. Yes. It was last uh, session 
uh, you got a question about Nirvana, Buddhism, and uh, I got confused when I, I uh, hear the answer. You said that uh, Nirvana and the fifth dimension is the same, and in my opinion, there is a difference in the fifth uh, dimension. You stay, still li live your life experience the rebirthing, but in nirvana, it's the in internal dying. You don't have to live and you don't rebirth. Am I wrong now? No, I mean, both of them are correct and both of them are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, confusing. <laughs> no, they're both food for mind. This is just a mind wants some food. I see. Yeah, it's another way of the mind wanting to keep itself occupied with words. Nirvana, fifth dimension, da 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 da. Yes. They're not the same or they're the same or this is the difference. It's the mind is playing tricks. Yeah, I see. Because it doesn't matter. No. Whatever they are, it's meaningless. Yes. Yeah. But thank you for bringing it. It's great because that's everyone, everybody else's questions. Mm -hmm. The mind will do anything to pull you out of silence. So mm -hmm. we'll come up with all kinds of questions. When we sit together in silence and we don't have an agenda, we're not trying to, we're simply, we're not even trying to get enlightened. We're here together in silence without any agendas, okay? And what happens is that you tap into one heart and a force field is being created. An energy field gets created. Because you're raising your vibrations to a higher frequency through being quiet, being in your heart. And we tap into the unified field of oneness. And in that the unified field of tapping into it, the yani appears. The yani. You need to Google that. The yani is the master, the guru. It appears in the middle. And when the yani appears in the middle, so you're all a part of the unified field. You have come into the oneness. You're quiet, you're Zen, you're here, and you have no agenda. You're not trying to do anything. You're not trying to get anywhere. You're just exercising your natural state of being, which is being silent. And the master appears in the middle. 
the yani, the sat guru. And the sat guru starts to eat your karma. He will start eating your karma or she and starts to clear your karma and accelerate your spiritual awakening. It opens the pathway and socks you in to self-realization. That's where the transmission of wisdom takes place. That's why it's so groovy. That's why we dig it. We love it. When we come together and we connect in our hearts, and we've seen it happen many, many different times. So many retreats we've had together, so many workshops we had together in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, Poland, here in the US, Sedona, so many times we came together or here online at the Academy or this Global Self-Awakening workshop and a connection happens and a deep silence takes over and you begin to feel the transmission of love and bliss. It's beyond time, space, the power of it. It exists beyond time, space. It doesn't matter we're together physically or not, our hearts become one. We meet in the unified field of love. We become pure because it's one intention. And in these moments, wisdom gets transmitted. And we begin to get a glimpse of the truth of who we are. There is nothing in this world that can harm you. There is nothing in this world that can touch you. There is nothing in this world that you would fear from. Nothing. When you touch this place, You go beyond any kind of human limit. because you recognize who you are.
you recognize that God is the only thing there is. God is the only thing that ever existed. And you are that. Our next session is going to be tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is so strong, I have a hard time to speak. <laughs> I want to thank you for your generous donations. Some of you made some large donations and I'm in awe. I am bewildered and extremely grateful. Thank you for supporting us and your love. I'm really touched, really, really grateful. Thank you. Really grateful for all the love that you give me, all your lovely comments, including, all of it is included, even if you criticize or you wanna share or something you find that is not adequately presented, feel free to contact me and write to me. I'm open to all of it. feel free to reach out. You can contact us via, via our email, which is info at zaratustra.tv. This broadcast is recorded and we'll be emailing it to you. Those of you who registered through the Zoom, you'll get a copy of it sent to you in the next day or two. You can also refer to my 
YouTube channel, which is Zarathustra 5D, as well as our Facebook uh, pages and Instagram through Zarathustra 5D. And reach out and connect with us. Stay in your center, be quiet, stay in your heart, trust the process. Know that that which has brought you to this point, that which created the world, is responsible to carry you all the way to the end. Trust the power. Stay in this place of trusting. Demonstrate that to yourself. Practice it. When in doubt or in trouble or moments that you are really desperate, sink back into this place with this conviction that it will take care of everything. And you will see how miraculously doors open up for you, answers show up, people show up, and everything gets handled. beyond our imaginations. Take challenges of your life as a blessing. Don't look at them as a challenge. Look at them that your guru is testing you and is preparing you for awakening.